Amma Ba'd. We begin by praising Allah. We praise and we thank Allah. We say Alhamdulillah. We praise Allah for who He is. We thank Allah for what He does for us. And this is key. These are two key things when it comes to every believer in our daily reflection. As we know, it is the habit of every true believer to reflect over the creation of Allah, to reflect over the ayat of Allah, to recite the Qur'an and then to reflect and ponder its meanings. As Allah says, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ That those who remember Allah a lot, they remember Him when they are standing, when they are sitting on their sides, and they ponder over the creation of the heavens and the earth. And so when we ponder over the creation of the heavens and the earth, we always have to realize two things. We have to remind ourselves of two things. Number one, who is Allah to me? How much do I know of Allah? Do I recognize Him today, every single day? Have we, are we mindful of Him? Do we become more aware of Allah, of His sight on us, of His presence? Inna ma'akum mustami'oon, He says, that I am with you hearing, seeing. Wa huwa ma'akum ma kuntum. Allah is with us wherever we may be. He has complete knowledge of us. He even knows everything that's inside our hearts and even deeper than that, our very intentions. So are we realizing this on a daily basis? And also what does Allah do for us? All of the favors that He bestows upon us. Who Allah is and what He does for us. For that we say Alhamdulillah. Every day we are reminding ourselves so that we may praise Him from the bottom of our, of our hearts. And so let us ask ourselves the question, who is Allah? One of the names of Allah is Al-Khaliq, the Creator, the one who made us. Allah, He says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ طِينٍ ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ That your Lord Al-Khaliq, He says, it, Verily we have created man. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ طِينٍ From an essence, an essence or an extract of clay. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُطْفَةً Then we made it into a sperm drop. فِي قَرَارٍ مَكِينٍ In a firm abode. Talking now about the womb. Everything that the body or the baby needs, it is nourished completely in the womb. Allah says, ثُمَّ خَلَقَنَا النُّطْفَةَ عَلَقَةً From the sperm drop, he makes a clinging substance. He transforms it into a clinging substance. ثُمَّ خَلَقَنَا النُّطْفَةَ عَلَقَةً فَخَلَقَنَا الْعَلَقَةَ مُضْغَةً And then from the clinging substance, he transforms it. He creates it again into an embryonic lump. As he starts developing the baby inside the womb of the mother, all by the power of Allah, all by the command of Allah. And then he makes the bones for it, for the baby, whilst it's inside. And then he clothes those bones with flesh. And then the angel comes to breathe the soul into the baby, to bring it alive. We produce that body into something totally different. A body in itself is not a human, but the soul, the ruh, that brings us to life, the life force that we have. So blessed is Allah, the best of creators. Now why does Allah say khaliqeen, the best of creators, when He is the only one who can truly create from nothing? And the answer to that it's because you and I, we can also create in a sense, right? We can create, we can transform one material into another material. I'm creating a video right now as we speak, but I'm using that which Allah has provided. Whilst Allah Himself, He is the only one who can create and bring something into existence from nothing. All by one command. As Allah says, فَإِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُنْ He just says to it, be. And then it comes into being. Do we recognize this? Are we mindful of this in our daily affairs? That is the purpose. When Allah tells us about his ayat, when Allah explains to us his names and his attributes, 
and how he deals with us and how he does things. It's for us to be increased in Iman, in fear and in love for Allah, in khashiya, in rahba and rahba. To be able to fear Allah correctly and to love Allah correctly and to desire what he has correctly. All of that is there for a reason. And for those who believe, for us believers, when we ponder over the Qur'an, we have to be realizing this. As Allah continues to say, so Allah, He created us. He says, Allahu alladhi khalaqakum thumma razaqakum He created you, but not only that. He provided for you. He gave you everything. He gives us everything on a daily basis. Everything that we need. He is continuously providing for us. Even when we become neglectful of Allah, He is still providing for us. Another name of Allah that we must all be aware of and have a close relationship with is al ghaffar the intensely forgiving, the one who loves to forgive. And so the simple question is, do we love to seek forgiveness from Allah? Because indeed, inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin. Allah loves those who are constantly repenting to Him and seeking istighfar. As we know, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, minimum 70 times a day, he would be seeking istighfar. But let us continue. In Surah Mu'minun, these ayat that we just recited, right at the beginning, Allah, he says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ That verily the believers, those who have true iman, they are successful in this life and the next. And that's something that every single human being, we are all wanting, success. And Allah, He uses the word in this surah twice, أَتْرَفْنَاهُمْ For example, those who have been given luxury in this dunya. But when He speaks about the materialism and the luxuries that the people have in this dunya, it's not in a good sense. The first time around is the reason why the people of the past, they rejected the Anbiya. When the Anbiya went to them, when the Messenger went to them, and they denied him, وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِهِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِلِقَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ they denied, they rejected the Akhirah. They rejected the meeting with their Lord, the one who created them and made them and provided for them. Why? Because they had luxuries in this dunya. And so we find there's a deep relationship that whenever Allah starts giving us too much of dunya, we start neglecting Him. And slowly but surely we start rejecting Him altogether. And slowly but surely it leads us down the roads of kufr. May Allah protect us from that. May Allah protect us from that. But from a young age, and whilst we are here, we should be seeking knowledge to increase our knowledge of Allah. You know, statistically speaking, I came across a file this week. Statistically speaking, those who apostate from Islam, the majority of them are immigrants. Those who come from other countries where there was no security. Because when you are in an insecure position, when there's harm around you, when there's difficulties around you, when there's war and strife and everything else, it's very easy to lose your Iman. And so we find statistically speaking, that majority of the people who leave Islam, they lose their Iman completely, are immigrants. They run away from one place where there was no security, seeking to go to a place where perhaps they can make a better life for themselves, to get the luxuries of this dunya. For that very reason, many of the people travel to a different country, to a first world country. وَأَتْرَفْنَاهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Allah says, حتى إذا أخذنا بالعذاب حتى إذا أخذنا مترفيهم بالعذاب إذا هم يجأرون The very same people who love to enjoy luxury in this dunya, they neglect Allah. So when He finally seizes them in punishment, then they start crying out. Then they finally remember. إذا هم يجأرون They cry out loud. Allah says, لا تجأروا اليوم On this day, don't cry. إِنَّكُمْ مِنَّا لَا تُنْصَرُونَ you will not be helped by Allah on this day. Why is that? That the ayat of Allah were recited to you day in and day out, but you were turning on your heels, running away from it. May Allah protect us from that. So what is success then? Allah, He lists us, He tells us what success is. And we'll finish on this note. When Allah, He says, أَيَحْسَبُ أَنَّمَا نُمِدُّهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ مَالٍ وَبَنِينَ أَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّمَا نُمِدُّهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ مَالٍ وَبَنِينَ That do you think or do they think that because Allah extends to them some wealth and some children and some family again the luxuries of this dunya نُسَارِعُ لَهُمْ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ That we want to honor them with good in this life and the next Rather, they do not perceive. They are blind to the truth. So, 
if Allah gives us in this life, it does not mean that He's favoring us. It does not mean that He wants good for us in the Akhirah. It does not mean that He wants to forgive us in the Akhirah. But what tells us then? How can we know whether Allah wants to forgive me? Whether, I, whether I'm going to be honored by Allah? How can I be of those people, of the true believers? Allah, He says, powerful ayah to ponder over. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ هُمْ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ رَبِّهِمْ مُشْفِقُونَ Number one, those who are of khashiya, fear that is born out of knowledge. The more you learn about Allah and His greatness and His majesty and His beauty and His might and His power and His mercy and His forgiveness, everything to do with Allah, His, his generosity, His dhul jalali wal ikram, the Lord of honor, the Lord of nobility and honor and generosity. Allahu Akbar. The more we learn about Him, the more we can become aware of Allah. The more we can include Him and involve Him in all of our affairs. The more we can single Him out and worship Him correctly. Then our fear, our sense of fear, an, an honorable type of fear is born into our hearts. Khashia. A type of fear that is born from knowledge. It becomes a barrier between us and between sin. So because of this khashiya that the believers have, they are afraid of the punishments of Allah. So they try their best to stay away from sins. And whilst we recite this, these ayat, we have to measure ourselves to what Allah is listing out. That those who have firm iman, they believe in the ayat of Allah. As we know Allah, He said in another place in the in the Quran that when his ayat are recited to the true believers their iman is increased they feel motivated to do more by the time they get to the end of their khutbahs and their lectures and whatever else they feel ready to worship Allah they do righteous actions after they believe when they learn about Allah they learn about aqidah about knowledge of iman when the iman is increased they don't just sit down and do nothing when they leave the masjid after the khutbah, they don't just sit down and do nothing. They start doing righteous actions. They try to implement it straight away. Scientifically speaking, when a person is motivated to do something in their life, when they get an idea, within the first three hours, if they don't do something about it, the motivation goes away. And that stands true also with our iman. That if we hear something of the ayat of Allah, something of the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and the sunnah is included in the dhikr. When Allah says, وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ Allah is not just speaking about the ayat of the Qur'an but rather also the sunnah because Allah sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the sunnah to explain the Qur'an to, to give you the application of the Qur'an it's inseparable so whenever an ayah is recited to the believer or whenever a, a, a hadith is recited to the believer. They are increased. They are ready to take action. May Allah make us of them. Allah continues to say وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِرَبِّهِمْ لَا يُشْرِكُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ Allahu Akbar, powerful. So those who do not commit shirk, they don't associate any partners with Allah. And those who give, they give whatever they give, whilst their heart, it's in a state of wajal, fear. What sort of fear? And this is something we all need to live by. They fear that they are returning to their Lord. And so Aisha, عنها, she went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, who is this ayah referring to? Is it referring to the sinner? Because he is trying to do some good, but he knows he has so many sins, so he fears returning back to his Lord, fearing that Allah is going to punish him. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, no. This is referring to the one, it refers to the one who offers his salah on time. And he fasts in the month of Ramadan. He gives his zakat. He does as many good as he can. He tries to offer his tahajjud, he fasts on Monday and Thursdays. But he's afraid, wajal, he's afraid that Allah may reject those deeds. Because it wasn't good enough. The ikhlas maybe wasn't there. Maybe he was lazy in those forms of ibadah. Allah says, Ula'ika yusari'una fil khayrat. Those are the ones, because of this fear of rejection, they do more good deeds. 
And because of that, they become of the best of the people. And Allah honors them in the Akhirah. And so we have to ask ourselves, whilst we are coming to the Masjid, we are here for Jumu'ah for example, there are those of us who come every single day, maybe five times a day. Do we feel as though now, yes, we are secure from Jahannam? Maybe we are not understanding the Qur'an in our salah. Maybe we are not feeling it in our salah. The tears are not coming down anymore. Sometimes we're even standing in our salah, we cannot focus. Is that us? Is that the situation? In that, if that's the case, then we know that some things have to change. And so, again, we are already past the time. It's already past 2.30, so there were a few more topics to discuss, but we'll keep it over there for today. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول قولي هذا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك